So in uh, sketching out for my landscape vision, what's called a planning sketch, I'm going to look at all these different references I've collected, mostly of rocks and hills and purple mountains and skies. And then I also grabbed some of the, the police sirens that I used on my last emoji exercise because they might be kind of special effects in the background to give a bit of eeriness to things. But I have kind of an overall inspiration. I'm going to try that out of this cartoon background. And so in order to get all that started, I need to open up Photo P. It's not required, but it can be a good idea to log in to Photo P just using your email so that it remembers the kind of stuff you've done. And you can do that by clicking on account, right? And as long as it's yellow, you are signed in. And then I'm going to say open from computer. And I'm going to, I have everything organized in my digital art folder. And I've started one for assignment one. And then what I want to open is the PSD file. where I had just drawn what are called uh, format boxes, kind of roughly, just using the, the brush tool. I take the opacity down just a little bit. And this is going to be a landscape format, wider than it is tall. And this is going to be a portrait format. But in order to sketch, I need to kind of know what references I'm trying to piece together in my plan. So here are my references. I could bring in my cartoon inspiration and then using what we've learned in our compositing exercises, can hit control T, shrink it down, and tuck it away somewhere just to refer to it. And you can make your landscape any kind of rectangular format you like. So it can be more square, it can be longer, whatever you think is gonna work for it combining your references. And then I want to um, have my reference images open in a way that I can see them while I'm sketching. And that can be a little tricky when you're working digitally. But often, you know, arranging the screen is important. So I'm gonna, I, I marked the ones I'm most interested in using with orange. And so I'm going to view them based by tags. That's going to put all my orange ones together. So I have six references I'm thinking of sketching with. I'm just going to put them all to the side like this. I don't really need to access my layers too much yet because I'm not compositing yet. I'm just sketching. And so now, Let's see, I'm going to shrink my tools, so I have a lot of sketching area. <laughs> and first I'll sketch with these three. I'm trying to arrange it so it's all in the recording space. This extra space here in PhotoP is annoying, but it's where ads show. And if you want a good ad blocker, that works on Photo P, I've found that uh, Ad Badger is a really good nonprofit ad blocker for it. All right, so the first thing is this major, really cool mountain reference where there are kind of these smooth hills. I'm thinking I want to use it, but I'm thinking because of the lighting, you see how the lighting here is directioned opposite from my inspiration? And most of the lighting of my reference is matching the inspiration. So I'm going to open that one up just in this simple uh, Mac program called Preview. It's the default for JPEGs. And I'm going to go to Tools, and I'm just going to say Flip Horizontal. And now when I close it, the only thing about Preview that you need to be aware of is it doesn't give you an option to save. If you close it, it automatically saves.
And so this is now flipped. I'm just waiting for the preview to reflect that. And maybe if I go back and then forward, it will show that. To update that preview. There we go. So it's flipped. So now the lighting is on the right side. And I, then I can start sketching it. So how do I want to use it? I want to use the mountain parts, but then I want to kind of cut it down so it slopes like so. And that's going to be, I might make a little note, that's going to be the painted hills. Or what I often do is just number them and then number the reference. Okay, so that's number one. The next thing is the foreground rocks. And for that, I have this reference. That big foreground rock. So I'm going to call this number two. And then I'm going to sketch that one in. And because it's digital compositing, I can scale it much bigger. These are high resolution images. I like that strong shadow it has. It's going to help give it presence. So that's number two. Next, I need a foreground mountainside. I don't really have that in these six. But what I'm thinking is I can use a little bit of this foreground mound. I'm going to call that three. And I'm just kind of playing with how I'll do this. Because I want an original composition using found images. You know, so it will kind of go like that. Or maybe I'll make it a little steeper. So it's that mound. And so that's going to be three. Now what I'm kind of excited about is just layering lots and lots of, of different rocks, right? So I'm going to make a duplicate of number three. So I have three copy. I'm going to open it in preview, and I'm going to flip it. because I kind of like this arrangement. So you see the mound I'm going to use, but I also like all of these kind of mushroom rock forms. And I think I want to use some of those. Over here in the image. So I'm going to take that flipped one. Hey, Professor, there's a question in chat for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so this is a, a, a landscape assignment. And professionally, this is what you do when you're a concept artist and you're designing environments and backgrounds. So I don't want you to composite any animals into it or any living things or any working vehicles. Basically, I don't want you to composite anything into it that we would expect to be moving at any pace, right? So you can put clouds in it, even though clouds move. But we want it to work as a backdrop because we're going to be putting creatures that we design for the next assignment into the landscape later on. So it's all going to be kind of desolate. Here, I'm going to put that kind of rock formation right there. So this is going to be number, I'm going to call it three, C, so the three copy. For some reason, I can draw just fine with a trackpad, but I really can't write very well. And then this also has a lot of other references I can use for these little rocks that will scatter this very bare alien hillside. Now I get to work on the background.
and there are some nice backgrounds here. Uh, especially in my reference is a little reflecting pool in front of the purple mountains. So that's perfect for this. So this is going to be number four. And I want to put that mountain range, but just the purple mountains and the side. And it kind of cuts in like that. And then it has this beautiful reflecting pool underneath it. So all of this is four. And then for my fifth, I need a sky, because this doesn't have a whole lot of sky, and I want it to be a really pale sky. And so this reference I thought was very good. All of these were from Pixabay, just looking up purple mountains. Luckily, there's a whole lot of landscape photos on Pixabay. And so I want that mountain range to be here, and kind of the taller peak. And then the sky, all of this is going to be five. OK. Now I can take those same inspirations and try to compose them vertically. And I might, might make different choices. Um, I also have this extra one, some really good rocks here. I'll call that six. And I'll also allow myself to, oh no, what did I want to do with six? I remember now, I wanted to put six right in the water right here. So I can build my own reflection. So it doesn't look too typical. Okay. So I've got six different references. And now if I wanted to compose them into this environment, what might I do? Well, I'll take those same kind of shapes, but maybe arrange them differently, like give me more sky. I can scale them differently and just really layer the, the mountains on top of each other and the rocks. You know, and that's all from the copy of three. That's all two. This is all one. This is five. This is four. And then maybe I bring in something from my other references. Just looking over them to get some of that height or mountains in the background. Or maybe just have a really distant mountain. So I'm going to mark this and call this one seven. So it's all how you kind of organize your references because you're going to need to be able to use them well. So this, this will be kind of a nice background mountain option to give it a lot of scale. I'm still thinking the sky is going to come from five. I'm going to skip the little reflecting rock in this one. And this will be seven. OK, now I've composed it two ways. I'm not going to require that you do that this semester, just because we haven't had as much time for sketching as demoed. But what's helpful about forcing yourself to put it into two different formats is that you're really thinking through each of the, the references right, and their potential. And I'm actually thinking I like the vertical one a little bit more. I like how it leads the eye back. And I think that could be nice.